Okay guys, so that's the, uh, part number two for two point perspective. So we did the two first exercises. I started to show you a little bit for the third one, but I want to spend a little more time on it because it's so little confusing. Um, there are a few things you really need to pay attention to. So let's start with, let's see if I'm on screen here. Let's start with your horizon line, okay? Horizon lines, it's always the start for anything in perspective. Then I'm gonna have two points, VP1, and I'm gonna have VP2, right? So far, easy. Of course, use your ruler and your HB uh, pencil to go over and then your 2H. I'm just, again, doing free freehanded because otherwise it would take too much time and I don't have much time on those little videos. So horizon line, and then you're gonna create that true dimension, which would be the corner of your room. So you're gonna create a line like this, okay? Then um, you wanna take those two points and run them through the vanishing point number two. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do this, okay? Now I have, if I go over, that gives me the wall on the left side, okay? Now I'm gonna take that point here, I'm gonna run through vanishing point number one. So it's a little tricky for me because I'm lefty, so. All right, pretty good without a ruler and then I'm gonna take this point, same thing, all right? So if I go over this, and also I have the camera between my eyes and the paper, which makes it even harder. And all right, so now you have left wall, right wall, floor, ceiling, okay? So it's an empty box like we had for one point, it's just an angle instead of being a box, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do um, the windows on that wall. So the window on that wall is you're gonna decide the top and you're gonna run that through vanishing point number two. So receding line right here. And then you're gonna decide how tall you want your window and it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna do it like this, okay? So now I'm gonna stop these windows right here. So remember, vertical lines are always vertical and parallel to each other, all right? So if I go over those lines, like you would with your HB or 2B, again, doesn't matter, HB, 2B, that gives me like the shape, the general shape of the window. Now I wanna divide that shape in two. So the way to do this in perspective is to create two diagonals, corner to corner, corner to corner. That gives me a, paint, a point where they meet, and that's gonna give me half of this in perspective. So if you were to do to take a ruler and measure that, let's say it's four inches, and go to the two inches mark and find the center, it would be wrong. It's not in perspective. That's the only way to do this in perspective, all right? So that's half. And then we're gonna divide this on the drawing. There's actually four sections. So I'm taking this one, I'm doing the same thing, diagonal, diagonal, and then center line diagonal, diagonal, and then center line, okay? And then all those center line, I can run through my vanishing point number two, and that give me the partition in the center. Obviously on this drawing, this one is triple, that way it's sort of thicker, just for the drawing. So now you have the windows on the wall. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you how to do this piece of furniture, the shelves against the wall. The best way to do this is to create the shape that you want the furniture to be on the ground. So I'm gonna use vanishing point one here. I'm gonna say, okay, I want this to be that wide, okay? And then it's gonna be that thick. So this, using vanishing point one and two, gives me the place on the ground, okay? And that's gonna help me to prevent have things going inside the wall. Some students on the one point were a little confused. So that helps me uh, to do that without any problems. Then I'm gonna create the face of the piece of furniture. So I'm gonna take this corner and I'm gonna create a rectangle. I'm gonna use finishing point number two here. Here I'm gonna stop that. Okay, I'm going over every time, that way you can see. 
So this is the front of the furniture, okay? Then this corner here needs to recede to vanishing point one, and this corner here needs to recede to vanishing point one, correct? Then here in the bottom corner against the wall, that's the corner between the wall and the floor. This is where the furniture rests against the wall. This cannot go further in because we're in the wall. So I'm gonna take this corner and take it up, okay? That gives me the depth, okay? This gives me the depth of the furniture. It cannot go in the wall. And this point, I'm gonna go through vanishing point number two, and that gives me the corner of on the other side and the depth of the furniture, okay? So here now you have, as you can see, you have a furniture that rests against the wall, okay? It's not inside the wall. Um, now for uh, the shelves, the only thing you can do is create center line, a diagonal, okay? That's gonna create, give you the center line here. Um, that would be the shelves, but also here, you know that the line's gonna, gonna go here. It's gonna create the box, and here you're gonna have your double line. It's a little confusing here, and it's gonna be your shelf here, as you can see. And then on top, of course, you can double those lines to create thickness, and then on top, you can have fun, create all kind of little objects, little things like the little, uh, you know, uh, a vase. I mean, this, this is entirely up to you. You can put little flowers, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. So that's to create that piece of furniture. If you want a rug, let's say I want a rug in front here. Well, if I want a rug the same length than this furniture, I already can use this. See, I already have those lines, you know, and I can finish them up with vanishing point number two. So that, give me, that gives me here a little area rug on the floor, okay? And then you can create double lines, you know, using your vanishing point. You can create all kind of design, whatever you want. Um, let's see if I have time now to show you something else. Uh, here on that wall, there is like a picture on the wall. So same thing, it's like the window. Uh, I'm gonna use vanishing point number one for top and bottom. And then I decide, you know, where I want this picture to be. Then I can double my lines to create a little frame, you know, and then obviously like it's an abstract painting with little circles, what not. Then uh, I think you have a door here. So I'm using vanishing point, uh, number one for the top. Then I'm gonna do the beginning of my entry here. Again, you know, I'm freehanding because it's faster for me, but you guys are using your ruler, okay? And that gives you kind of a, the entry here. Um, I think uh, I don't have much more time to show you uh, the whole thing. Oh, there's a lamp here. So the lamp in the corner, it's gonna be uh, an ellipse like this. So it's a cylinder in the corner. And then, uh, you have an ellipse here, it resting on the floor and that creates uh, your little lamp right here, okay? And here, okay, I'm gonna do some little design. Um, all right, so then you have, let's see if I have time. Then you have, uh, the chair, so the chair or armchair, let's see if I can show you somewhere. I'm trying to find a piece of paper when I can draw. Uh, so I'm gonna, the best is to actually start with, uh, you, you're using the same vanishing point. Can you see it here? Yes. Uh, but you're gonna start with a block, okay? The same way we did before. So if I'm using a vanishing point like this, um, I can, after that, I can cut inside it and do exactly what I want. So let's see if I want something like this on the side, that, that's gonna create uh, the side of the chair. Then if I wanna match here, I'm gonna use the other vanishing point. It's gonna create the other side of the chair. And then here I would have my top so I can create something like that. So there's a bit of free ending. Then you can double those lines 
double those lines and then create your pillow underneath here, coming back this way, okay? And then you can round those things if you want a different type of armchair. But see, using the two points, that's how you build your chair. And then you can divide that again if you want, create a little more. Okay, and there's a low return underneath, and then that would be empty, that would be shaded. Um, then you can add like, like little rug, on, uh, not a rug, like a blankie, you know. Uh, uh, you can have uh, all those things with a glass. Uh, you can dress it up. I mean, after that, you can have all kinds of fun. But this is how it's built. All right, guys, I hope you have fun. Uh, so do those three exercises. And then uh, when you're done with the three exercises, we'll move on to the final assignment. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.